The puppy two is 85% full, so I'm going to be firing two drafts at once as I try to get my lineups in before the contest fills. I'll talk through some of the recent news as well as take a look back at how the ADP landscape has shifted over the course of the contest. You're watching another episode of The Climb. All right, so hopping in two draft lobbies here. You can see the first one is about to fill. So this will be team one here in the, the sheet on the right. While we wait for this to fill, getting into some of the, the bigger news or rumors today uh, have been surrounding Stefan Diggs. Some concerning quotes out of mini camp from Sean McDermott. Um, basically surrounding Diggs' absence. And then it's turned into a bit of a back and forth where Diggs' agent says he'll be there. The coaches and media say he's not there. The latest I've seen from Ian Rappaport makes it sound like it's a non-contract in-house disagreement that they're dealing with. So I've seen some speculation from Bill's camps basically saying it could be some unhappiness with his usage down the stretch and during the playoffs. Uh, this was a quote from Josh Allen, basically coming out in support of Diggs. Some other players have as well. All this is to say that I'm, I'm not really changing my stance on Diggs at this point. If people want to give me a discount, I'm happy to take it. Uh, there's been a couple other minor injury notes lately. Uh, Dawson Knox apparently was hurt in practice today. Rashad Bateman sounds like he could still have some issues surrounding his Liz Frank injury from last year. Overall, in general, if the market is giving me a discount on a player related to injury, I'm going to take it because the production that we care about in these contests is so far in the future. And there's going to be so many other injuries that happen between now and then that, you know, if I'm building a portfolio of teams, you kind of got to take the Warren Buffett, um, investing perspective and be greedy when other people are trying to be fearful. So, you know, maybe we'll see in these drafts if I get any uh, values or not around some of those injury news. So I got the four spot on this first team about to be on the clock. Real check, real quick, we'll take a look here. Got the eight spot in this draft. So I would guess Diggs is on the clock there from when I come up in that one. But here, more than happy to take Cooper Cup in the four spot. He is a guy who I've been taking over Tyreek Hill. And here Diggs goes at the five, so maybe no discount at all with the recent news. So looking at the eight spot, I've done you know a lot of my drafts in the back half of the first. Um, largely been taking Diggs and A.J. Brown ahead of Eckler and Bijan. Really, I've been pretty much in line with ADP, although sometimes I will pass on Kelsey just because I think there's really good values on tight end in the sixth and seventh round right now. Lately, I've been seeing Kittle fall into the sixth round quite a bit, so I've kind of fading Kelsey a little bit uh, just with that. So Diggs goes at the seven here. No discounts to be seen on him. We'll go A.J. Brown. Um, Eckler has definitely been a riser lately. He, he's flipped Bijan ever so slightly in the ADP department. You know, I, li I like both of those guys. I don't, I don't have a super strong opinion. I think I like Bijan more than E.J., uh, if you guys didn't see our episode with uh, our friend Ben, who doesn't play best ball, it's our best ball beginner episode from last week. Definitely worth a watch. Ben is really funny. That draft was a lot of fun. And you'll get to watch me and EJ uh, really get into it on uh, Bijan's outlook with me being more pro Bijan than EJ. Basically, I don't, I don't see a world where Bijan – doesn't dominate the touches by the end of the season. And we've seen that this offense is one that could run the ball really, really efficiently. 
So coming around the turn here with the quarterbacks falling during this contest, you can sometimes reach a little bit for Devonta Smith in hopes of setting up the basically the premium double stack for Philly. I have not had much success in doing that, so I've kind of stopped <laughs> reaching for Devonta unless I am reaching a little bit on A.J. Brown. Say I take him at pick five. At that point, it's a little bit more viable to, to get Hurts only a few picks into the third, but seems pretty rare for, for him to fall all the way outside of the top 30 picks. So it looks like we're going to come up on the clock in both of these around the same time. Saquon's another guy who's been falling solely because of some holdout concerns. So I've been not been drafting much Saquon, but when he does end up at the end of the second round, I've been taking him, trying to build up some exposure to him. Looking like we're going to be in a really good pocket for wide receiver here um, with, with Garrett Wilson falling a little bit in this one. We'll see if he gets past this guy here. Unfortunately, he doesn't, so could go Waddle. Chubb is another guy who I've been trying to take more of. He, he has really strong touchdown upside in that Cleveland offense, but I think I'll go Jalen Waddle here. Waddle also gives me an out at quarterback with uh, Tua going a little bit later in case Hurts doesn't fall to me. 20 seconds on the clock here. Olave just came off. He would have been a fun pick. Um could grab Higgins and see if Mahomes falls, but that's doubtful with the chase drafter between me and the turn. So I'll grab Pollard here, see what we get. We'll have plenty of running back options around the other side. Could get one of the elite quarterbacks as well. Um, you know, Josh Allen and, and Mahomes are both easy to stack up later in the draft. Saquon and Jacobs are both guys who have had some buzz in the recent days about, you know, potential holdout stuff. And it feels like the market has reacted more to the Saquon stuff than Josh Jacobs, even though he's had some pretty cryptic stuff about, you know, basically taking a stand for the running backs that come after him. So, you know, if, if you are worried about holdout risks, um, you know, you should, probably be downgrading Jacobs as much as you are Barkley. But again, me personally, I'm trying to buy the dip on either one of those guys when they drop. So an interesting spot here, Stevenson off the board. So not really looking running back at this point. So deciding between Hertz or Allen, um, the problem with taking Hertz is you pretty much have to get Dallas Goddard in the sixth or seventh. Otherwise you're, you're really out of luck on stack options. Whereas Josh Allen, there's, there's quite a few guys. You got Gabe Davis going later. Uh, so I think we'll take Hertz and hope we get lucky here. One challenge that this presents as well, Hertz and Stafford both have week 10 buys. So I have had drafts where I've had quarterbacks on the same buy. I know Neil Farley has, has done some data analysis showing that it can have a meaningful impact on your expectation of getting a team out. But, you know, if it makes sense for my roster construction, I'm okay to do it. So unfortunately did not get the Jalen Hurts fall here. Could go Josh Allen or Lamar if we want to go elite quarterback. Um, but as I said at the top, we also have Tua as an option for this team. So mix it up a little bit and go Josh Jacobs on this lineup. I said I wasn't going to let the holdout news scare me and I'll stick to my guns there. So a little bit of time here before my next pick. So I pulled some data from four for four, looking at the biggest risers and fallers over the course of the puppy two, just to get an idea of guys that maybe we 
can take advantage of the discounts or start fading if they're too expensive. And this is just raw ADP change. It's not percent ADP change. So some of the guys in the higher rounds who where you know smaller ADP changes are more significant aren't going to show up here. But basically the biggest risers have been Rondale Moore and Tyquan Thornton, as well as the Vikings running backs and Jerome Ford. So, you know, at this point with 85% of the lineups in, let's just say 50% of people got Rondale at a discount, which given the timing, I don't think is a perfect comparison, but let's just say for the sake of argument, it is you've got to decide whether you're comfortable taking Rondale two rounds ahead of the rest of the field, which me personally, I'm, I'm not that into Rondale, so I'm, I'm happy to fade him at his current cost. And I think he's going to keep rising. Uh, he's got a pretty high ranking from the folks over at Establish the Run. And that's kind of the thought process you've got to go through with each of these guys. So like Ty Chandler has basically gone from an 18th round to a 17th round pick. That change doesn't scare me off of him as much, whereas Madison going from you know, around pick 80 up towards pick 65. That's a pretty significant shift. Um, this stuff with a, with a narrow time window contest like the Puppy 2 doesn't necessarily have as big of an impact as something like Best Ball Mania, but I do think it's still important to, to think through some of these risers and fallers. So we're coming up on the clock here in both of these drafts. Specifically with team one, we'll definitely be looking wide receiver. Um, no quarterbacks or tight ends on the board at this point for team two either. So probably looking wide receiver here as well. In terms of any correlation stuff, we've got... Yeah... Mark Andrews, not surprisingly, already off the board. So nothing, nothing screaming at us here for correlation. So probably just a situation where we take the best available. Keenan's risen quite a bit from when Best Ball Mania first opened. He was around a, oh, I don't know, fifth round pick, early fifth. Now he's he's risen to the top of this tier. I think that's in part some of the back injury stuff with Mike Williams has started to scare people a little bit. He goes off the board there. Um, so basically deciding between Christian Watson or Jerry Judy here. Don't have anything too obvious in terms of correlation and we're on the clock and the other one. So I'm just going to grab Christian Watson and get a move on here. Unfortunately, wide receiver has kind of dried up in this one. Um, I like McLaurin, but I have cooled on him a little bit. Just I think you can get good spike week production from the other two Washington wide receivers as well. So, um, and he's he started to rise as well. He he used to be a, a four or five turn pick. Now he's going more into the fourth. Another thing we could have tried to do there if we hadn't taken Hertz is set up the DJ Moore, Justin Fields stack. That's that's one I don't I don't have a ton of that stack. I don't hate taking it, but uh, yeah, kind of a rough spot here in this one. Uh, probably looking at Godwin at this point. Joe Mixon came off the board and with detours already at running back and quarterback. Um, feel the need to go wide receiver here. The Bucks offense is scary, but it's kind of a bet on talent here with Chris Godwin or hope that he gets uh, traded somewhere better. So we'll grab him here. Hope for the best.
So let's take a look, see if anything interesting is going on in these rooms. A lot of quarterbacks. I guess that's actually just par for the course. Just seemed like a lot right around me there. One thing that did catch here, the Tyree Hill drafter took Jalen Hurts with his Devonta Smith. So maybe, just maybe that means we can push Tua all the way around into the ninth round. So that'll be something to keep in mind with that team. Five picks away there, so we'll take a quick look in this draft. Obviously, we're taken care of, for the most part, at quarterback in this one, so don't have to worry quite as much there. You can kind of worry about just taking the best pass catchers available for a while. And nothing really too egregious is standing out in this room, so... All right, we'll jump back in here. Two picks to go. We've got Josh Jacobs, A.J. Brown, Jalen Waddell, Christian Watson on this team. I wouldn't mind taking Mixon if he makes it to me here. Mid-fifth when he's been going uh, steadily higher and higher, he was on that list of of risers. And considering he's a fifth-round pick, that's a pretty good increase in his price. Also could go Dobbins, set up a week 17, bring back there for Jalen Waddell, and we are hoping to set up the two a thin. So Madison goes here. That's a pretty steep price to pay for Madison. Boy, interesting spot here, deciding between Mixon or Dobbins. I think I'll go Mixon just because I uh, still think he is probably – mispriced in one direction or the other should either be you know a third round pick or going much later than that if he's going to be suspended or cut from the Bengals so four picks away now on our Hertz team we got to remember we're looking to get Dallas Goddard on the squad here could take him at pick 69 that's in line with ADP we do have two of the drafters at the turn with tight ends, so we could gamble and push it. I don't know if I necessarily feel the need to do that just because it really does put us behind the eight ball as far as getting a stack partner for Hertz, especially with Pitts coming off the board. Uh, the guy at the two spot could take Goddard from us, so we'll queue him up. Take a quick look here where we're three picks away. Probably a wide receiver spot, given we have two running backs at this point. Pitt's also interesting, but this pocket of good wide receivers has been getting pushed up more and more. So kind of want to get a wide receiver here before they fall off. And we did get Goddard, so that feels good. Don't have to sweat that one. All right, could go Marquise Brown for the Week 17 with A.J. Brown. That's an option. Tyler Lockett. There goes it. There goes Marquise. No surprise there. <laughs> Tyler Lockett and Deontay Johnson are both guys I really like. Uh, let's think here. They play each other in Week 17. Could go Jordan Addison. Set up a Christian Watson pairing for Week 17. So couple options here. I think I'm just going to take the best available guy I really like in Lockett. And I mentioned um, Neil Farley earlier. He did show some interesting work. Um, basically that not just ADP value is important, but that positional ADP value is important. So when you're, when you've decided that you're taking a wide receiver, if you're taking the best wide receiver available, that's typically uh, more helpful to your lineup in the long run than trying to outsmart the market. 
All right, so this is our Hertz team. We've also got Pollard, Cup, Terry, and Chris Godwin. Damian Pierce fell a little bit here where we've got Gabe or Quentin Johnston. I might uh, shoot, shoot, shoot. Woo! Gabe Davis at the last second. Ultimately wanted to go wide receiver there because we are at the cliff, basically. By the time I'm up again, there's not going to be much left at wide receiver, and I've already made three detours on this team with Hertz, Pollard, and Goddard. So I think I would have been really behind the eight ball at wide receiver if I didn't get Gabe Davis there. So we got another gap here before the next pick. Taking a look at the biggest ADP fallers since the Puppy 2 open, Josh Downs has fallen quite a bit. Seems like the market is finally correcting after he was kind of being priced as a late first, early second round pick in the NFL draft during the big board. So he ended up being a third round pick. His ADP took a while to reflect that. But now I've even seen drafts where you can get him in the 18th round. Um, more than happy to take him there, especially since I do have an affinity for Anthony Richardson. So another guy who's been falling, Kyler, obviously he's got the risk of you know, potentially not playing at all this year. I still especially now that he's cheaper and some of these later round quarterback options like Purdy and Mac Jones have started to creep up. Uh, I've still been taking Kyler. He just has a lot of upside for a quarterback who's going, you know, in the 15th, 16th round or even later than that. During our live stream with EJ, I talked about Jalen Hyatt. He's another guy who I think should be falling. So I have not been taking him much. I'd like to see him continue to fall. And then we've got all of the Miami running backs falling on the risk of Dalvin Cook news. Unfortunately, I have been drafting a lot of my, a lot of the Miami running backs to this point. So seeing them fall has been kind of painful. And I think I'm leaning towards continuing to take them to try and lower my cost versus being completely out. You know, A-Chain especially is the one who, you know, I don't – Dalvin Cook going to Miami is going to hurt all of them, but I think A-Chain is going to have a shot to have a role, whereas one of Wilson or Mostert could end up in a, in a bad spot. So we're on the clock here. This is our Jacobs mix-in team with four wide receivers. Waller would have been a nice pick. He came off the board. Nothing obvious at this point at quarterback. So we're just deciding on a wide receiver. I know Bateman had foot injury stuff today. That was a tough one for me. I took the ADP value there instead of reaching on Bateman. Bateman would have been a pairing with Waddle for week 17. But ultimately going to grab... Gabe Davis here. In terms of quarterback options for this team, we've got Tua, Jordan Love, and Tyler Lockett, Tyler Lockett, Geno Smith, all still as quarterback options for this team. So, you know, in that case, taking a Gabe Davis didn't hurt too much. But that is one thing I've found that I need to be a little bit more mindful of is when I am taking these lineups where I hit the wide receiver really heavy early and I'm, you know, potentially doing a three quarterback build later. If I don't have outs to stacking partners, I end up with some teams that I don't really like. So on the clock here, this is our Hertz team. We do have Pollard, uh, David Montgomery falling into the eighth round. Feels nice. Not seeing anything else super obvious at wide receiver. Could go Jamison Williams, but I've, I've talked about he how he's a guy that I've been waiting a little bit to draft. I just think I think he's going to fall more by the end of the summer when the casuals show up and see that he's out for six games and get worried about his 
ability to advance teams. So back on the clock here, Zay Flowers comes off. He was a guy that I would have liked to take there. Don't have a, a stack partner for Watson here. Also don't have anything super pressing at wide receiver. A little bit ahead of ADP on Anthony Richardson, so I don't feel need to take him. I don't love Rashad White, but we'll we'll grab him. Continue to to stick to the uh, ADP value here. So right now on this team, we've got three running backs five wide receivers, and nothing else. So definitely looking at a five running back build for this team. On the clock with the other one, and it looks like we did not get lucky with Tua. Just kidding. This is not the team where I need to. Uh... All right, we'll grab Jamison. Running out of time on the clock. Still need a fifth wide receiver. Definitely feeling weak at wide receiver on this team. We do have a nice little uh, mini stack of Detroit and Dallas going for week 17 with this team. But, uh, yeah, get, starting to get confused between these two lineups. But did avoid drafting Tua onto the wrong team at least. But yeah, going back to team two, since I was talking through there, the roster construction here, looking at a five running back team for sure. Um, wide receiver could maybe get away with seven, which would open me up for three quarterback, three tight end. It's not a build that I do very often, but it has had an above average playoff advance rate in all three of the previous best ball manias. Uh, shout out to TJ Hernandez from four for four for compiling that data. While we've got a second here, just taking another look at the ADP fallers. One thing that struck me with both of these, obviously quarterbacks as a whole have been falling. The The early quarterbacks don't show up here, but basically Mahomes, Hurts, and Allen have all started falling into the third round. So the entire quarterback landscape is finally starting to get pushed down. But outside of Downs and Hyatt, you don't see any wide receivers on the list of fallers, whereas there's a good chunk on the list of uh, risers. And it just feels like the, the wide receiver market has become this runner, runaway train where everybody acknowledges that they're too expensive, but because they keep getting pricier and pricier, there's almost no way to avoid it. So we're all just being funneled into taking, taking these wide receivers earlier and earlier. So... It's going to be interesting to see how um, how it plays out, whether or not there is there is a way to counter that with with late round guys or not. I've definitely been trying to be more critical in thinking through what you know mid to late round veterans and rookies that I want to be targeting, so that I can start to take my foot off the gas on wide receiver a little bit earlier. Unfortunately, we did get sniped on Tua for real um, in this draft by the Hertz drafter as well. So he's off the board now as a quarterback option. We've got to think through if Geno's going to be there for us at 113, because if he's not, things start to get pretty thin for me, a quarterback on this lineup, especially if I'm only going seven wide receivers. We've got the JSN drafter with no quarterback at the turn. And Dak just came off the board. They've got CD Lamb. Oof, this might have to be a spot where we reach a bit for Geno. We are pretty strong at running back, so I don't feel the need to force a guy here. I think I am just going to grab Geno. Daniel Jones is another option. He has lots of stacking stacking guys late. So 
I don't love taking Geno ahead of ADP like that, but um, to fit the roster construction that I want to do with this lineup, I think it's it's a necessary evil. All right, two picks away over here. This is our Hertz team. Plenty of running back options on the board here. I think that's the route we'll be going. Zay Jones listening to the, the Fantasy Life preview for Jacksonville. That was their most recent one. He's he's a guy I probably need to start taking a little bit more of. Um, but again, I think running back is the way to go with this team. We've got P. Ryan. 10 spots past ADP. I kind of like taking a running back on the same team as a wide receiver that I have. Um, you know, a spike week from Harris could help me get Gabe Davis to the final or vice versa. So despite the ADP value, I think I'm going to take Damian Harris here. Part of my problem with P. Ryan is I have a lot. I have drafted a lot of him to this point, and have seen the Broncos rumored a little bit to be linked to some of the free agent running backs are out there. They've been tied to Dalvin Cook, but it doesn't necessarily sound likely that they take Dalvin. All right, on the clock here, Daniel Jones did fall, so we could, we could throw him on and build. Some giant stuff in late. Could also take Rashad Penny as a pairing with our AJ Brown. But I think I'm going to go Daniel Jones here. Set up our three quarterback build and hope we can get Jordan Love as our third. All right, two picks away on the Jalen Hurts team. I could go Zay Jones. I was just talking about him. Also, I have Terry McLaurin. So Eli Mitchell. Dang it. Eli Mitchell would have been a really, really nice pick there. Uh, we do have Jamison Williams. So could go. And David Montgomery. So could go Goff and make a bet on that Lions offense. But with so much capital invested in... Jalen Hurts, don't feel the need to do that. All right, I said I felt a little weak at wide receiver on this team, so we'll take Zay Jones. He's a solid veteran. He may not necessarily be a guy who we can bet on seeing a, a breakout late in the season, but he can also help this lineup stay afloat until Jamison Williams gets back. So let's take a look around these draft rooms. Boy, I was in some really weird draft rooms, um, especially later in the evenings. These Puppy 2 draft rooms, not only do you get some vicious snipes, but you just get people doing really weird stuff. I think I was in a room where I saw somebody do like a 4 3 three, six. I mean, it was, it's just really wacky roster constructions, not even just reaching on players, but just truly atrocious roster constructions. And those are kind of the rooms that are both fun and frustrating to be in. They give you an opportunity to get some really nice ADP value, uh, but you're also constantly at risk of having your team stacks destroyed. So, does look like we're seeing the, the Miami running back fall continue here. A-Chain uh, fell in both of these drafts, I think. Yeah, about 10, 10 spots later than what his ADP is listed at. So definitely, if you are still a believer in the Miami running backs or, or don't think that Dalvin's going to end up there, um, you know, this is, is prime time to get some leverage on the rest of the field with those Miami backs. So we know we're going three tight end here. We know we want Jordan Love a little bit later. Could grab Dobbs and set, set up a double stack for this. Could go Eli Mitchell as well, just to get another running back pairing. Mingo doesn't really fit this lineup. 
We'll go Eli Mitchell, grab some ADP value, see if Dobbs makes it around to us. I do expect the Packers to be relatively run heavy. So I don't don't necessarily feel the need to force a double stack there. And Mitchell's a running back I like, especially with just doing a five to make sure that those are a relatively solidified five running backs is nice. So we'll see here. Let's double check what Love's AP is 154. So definitely going to try to push Jordan Love back to me here in the 13th. Otherwise, we're looking for one more running back. Going to do three tight ends, so tight end picks. This is a range where I haven't been taking many tight ends, but this is definitely a spot where we could grab one. Where we could grab Jalen Warren, we have the, the Seattle stack. So Warren is kind of the last decent option to have a bring back for Pittsburgh. And for that reason, I actually kind of lean Warren over Dobbs just because I do like to get all three quarterbacks game stacked, if at all possible. While we wait here, take a quick look at our other lineup. We're sitting at one three six one. Golf still on the board. Uh, at this point, you almost by the time I pick, he'll be fifteen spots past ADP. Um, that feels like a good enough value to throw him on this lineup here. Otherwise, we've got Nico, another wide receiver I like, where we can can grab Warren or Bigsby. Both running backs I like here, and we've got Zay Jones, so that makes Bigsby uh, an interesting option. So we'll throw Warren and Bigsby in the queue on the clock in the other draft. Also have a guy like Chark as an interesting wide receiver option. So see what we got here. Dobbs came off the board, so we'll gladly take my guy Jalen Warren and be done at running back in this draft. And we're on the clock here. I think we're going to take the value on Goff and hope that one of these running backs makes it around to me. So done at quarterback on this team. Jalen Hurts, Jared Goff. Jalen Warren comes off. Unfortunately, I don't think Big Speed's going to make it. This guy here only has two running backs. So he could take Higby to pair with Cup, although he has the Week 10 bye with Goddard. So... Don't necessarily feel the need to force that. A little bit weak at running back, although still probably a five running back build. Yeah, there's there's enough late round tight end options that I don't feel the need to force Higby onto this team here. Chark is a nice veteran wide receiver option that would put us at seven wide receiver. Going to be getting pretty thin at running back if we don't grab one here. Devin Singletary has been a riser, and Roshan has been a bit of a faller, So, especially given the fact that it would be a reach to take Singletary over Roshan, basically between Roshan or Chark here. I think I'll go chart and try to piece together this this running back room later. Gives me a stack, mini stack there with Zay Jones. But yeah, at this point with seven wide receivers on this team, feeling a little bit better after being you know, a little bit thin. It could go either way, really, with Team 1 as to whether I want it to be 
six running backs and eight wide receivers or five running back, nine wide receiver, or could also do a five, eight, three tack on two tight ends. Um, there's just a lot of interesting tight end options at the end that I think it's, it's viable to take three. All right. So let's see what we got here. This, the Gino, oh yeah, this is the team where we wanted Jordan love. So not going to get cute here. Going to grab Jordan love to round out at quarterback room. So despite reaching a little bit on Gino, pretty happy with the way that this quarterback room turned out. So we know we're done at quarterback and running back on this team. We've got two more wide receiver spots and three tight ends for this team. So could, grab, could take the value on a Higby. We know we want a Giants wide receiver later. Actually, Higby pairs with Daniel Jones, so that would be a nice, nice bring back option there since we know we're going to get a Giants wide receiver later in the draft. As I mentioned in the fallers section, still don't love Jalen Hyatt at this cost, so I don't, don't feel the need to force him into the lineup. Unfortunately, Higby comes off the board. We've got Geno stacked. There's not a lot of Minnesota bring back options. So if KJ Osborne falls, uh, he's a nice game stack partner for my Jordan Love, Christian Watson, especially since we are done at running back. You know, can't tack on a Ty Chandler or a Dwayne McBride uh, late, late in the draft. So. Yeah, unfortunately, if K.J. Osborne does come off the board here, probably just going to let the Minnesota bring back go. Not worry about that one. One pick away here would be, a, yeah, of course, that one hurts. That one hurts a, quite a bit. Marvin Mims, Gerald Everett could go Taysom. We do have Rashad White, but that's a bit of a reach for Taysom. Could go NVS for Joe Mixon, bring back. I just like it, like, like the bet on Mims a little bit more. All right, we know for wide receiver, we basically want Giants guys. So we'll queue some of them up and hope that I don't fall asleep at the wheel and miss a pick. All right, three picks away now with our Hertz golf team. A little bit of flexibility as far as positions. Stafford falling as well. Obviously not going to take three quarterbacks on a Jalen Hurts team, but could have had Stafford paired with Cup instead of Goff with Jameson. Jerome Ford at this point when I've only got three running backs feels like a really nice pick, despite the fact that he has been a big riser. Um, let's see how much he's risen. Basically a full round, but when you're talking about a late 14th round pick versus a late 15th round pick, it's not quite enough leverage to scare me off of Jerome Ford. So still some roster construction flexibility with this team. Obviously taking at least one more running back, wide receiver, and tight end, and then basically have a luxury pick for what I want to do here with this one. Could go Laporta to give another pairing with Goff. I don't hate that. I've backed off on Laporta a little bit at his current price, but he's also started to fall a tad as well. So I think the market is kind of cooling on him after he got chased up the board initially as people people started to realize that he was, you know, a viable option. 
a lot of interesting tight end options here. Jawan Johnson's a guy I like, and he pairs with with Godwin at the moment for week uh, 17, but it doesn't matter because he comes off the board. In terms of running back options, I've got Tajay. Chuba is another Carolina guy. I don't love any of these. I don't feel the need to really force those guys in. So, oh, and we're on the clock in the other one. All right. So basically looking at a Giants wide receiver, Hodgins will probably make it around the turn. We have no tight end. Taysom Hill offers maybe the most upside of any tight end at this point. So we'll grab him. We'll also take the value on Laporta and the stack partner in Laporta as well. All right, we'll see if Hodgins makes it back around to us. Otherwise, I'm okay waiting. Paris Campbell actually had some decent uh, reports at OTAs. They use a pretty – getting pretty heavy usage. Obviously, Wandale Robinson is not on the field right now, so it's still got to factor in that aspect. I think part of why I'd be okay taking Hodgins here is just because there is going to be several – dart throws at tight end that we can add later. We've also got Musgrave and Noah Fant. You could take both of those and stack them with our quarterbacks. So plenty of options at tight end to the point that I don't feel the need to, to force them on here. Go ahead and throw those, throw those guys in the queue. Could also go Isaiah Likely. As a bring back for the or a little skinny stack there with Waddle for the playoffs. All right, so sitting in a pretty good spot. I've managed to not auto draft on any of these picks, which feels good. Have good, strong roster constructions going on both of them. So not bad at all for doing two drafts at once. Usually I have two monitors going, but for the sake of this the stream, uh, had them both on one screen. And Hodgins does make it back to us, so we'll get our stack partner for Danny Dimes and be done at wide receiver on this team. So a little bit of time now to think through how I want to play the rest of this lineup. Don't have to force a three tight end build by any means since we did make the bet on Goddard early. And we have both of our tight ends paired with our quarterbacks, which I really like doing. So Jeff Wilson has fallen almost 10, 10 spots past ADP here. I wouldn't mind grabbing him if he's still on the board when we pick. Actually, Kenny Gainwell is a really nice pick here um, for the same reasons that I talked about with Damian Harris and Gabe Davis. If Kenneth Gainwell happens to get a big game you know, during one of these playoff weeks, <laughs> He could help me carry a unique Hertz Goddard stack into the finals. So I like that quite a bit, six picks away. So might have to sweat it a little bit. As far as the Vikings RB2 goes, I've been taking plenty of Ty Chandler, but I'd also, you know, keep Dwayne McBride in mind. In these situations with a backup running back, I think sometimes the market gets a little bit overconfident in who the RB2 is. I certainly fell victim to that last year with Ronald Jones on the Chiefs. I think I ended up with like 15% Ronald Jones, and it was not a good time. So, you know, specifically, Chandler looks like more of a receiving back than Dwayne McBride does. So... You could 
could see a little bit more standalone value with Ty Chandler, whereas Dwayne McBride could be the more direct handcuff to Madison. Um, you know, again, just that's just a high level look at it. I think you've also got to consider their special teams roles, which I don't really have a firm grasp on at this point, but definitely pay attention to, you know, who's going to be active on game day, even if it doesn't necessarily look like they'll have the clearest role um, right off the bat in that backfield. So thankfully we did get Kenneth Gainwell. Um, interesting, interesting running back room, Tony Pollard, David Montgomery, Damian Harris, Jerome Ford, Kenneth Gainwell. I still feel like I can get by with five running backs here. So it really does feel like a luxury pick um, for the last spot on this team. All right, on the clock here in the 17th round, going to take Musgrave. I continue to see good reports about him in training camp. We've also seen or training camp OTAs. I've also seen reports that Josiah Degara has been working with the fullbacks. So Musgrave could just be competing against another rookie for the tight end one role. He's he's been great athleticism in terms of RAS score. Good reports on his pass catching out of camp. I think he's kind of the next in these late round rookie tight ends to get pushed up. All right, two picks away and a little bit more to think through here. We, we know for a fact we want one more wide receiver on this team. All right, so we'll look just at wide receivers here for a second. We've got, we've already got a golf double stack, so I don't feel any need to force. We've got Cup, Puka. Could also go with the Giants guys. Actually, I'll go. We've got Jacobs. I'll go Richie James here. Shit. Wrong team. Wrong team. <laughs> Caught that one at the last second. I do not have Joe Mixon on this team. So Tank Dell, rookie on Houston. Um uh, I think he's a nice upside pick for late round wide receiver. I do think the potential of Hopkins going there hurts him on the clock in the other one, but try to finish my thought process here. Basically, we, we've we got the Zay Jones and DJ Chark that can hold us over until Jamison gets back, until a guy like Tink Dell steps into his role, and then we can have upside in this wide receiver room late wait, late in the year. Boy, did I time out? Timed out on that one. I think the clock was showing me more. But it worked out because we had Fant queued up. So we finished with a 3 5 7 2 for this one. And Fant paired with our quarterback. So I think that worked out. Did time out, but it worked out. So recapping team two here, we have a 3 5 7 3. Not a build that I do very often, but our team was Geno Smith. Daniel Jones, Jordan Love, running back room of Josh Jacobs, Joe Mixon, Rashad White, Eli Mitchell. Okay, I'm losing it. Josh Jacobs, Joe Mixon, Rashad White, Eli Mitchell, Jalen Warren. At receiver, we got A.J. Brown, Jalen Waddell, Christian Watson, Tyler Lockett, Gabe Davis, Marvin Mims, Isaiah Hodgins. So went pretty heavy at wide receiver and then hit the brakes. And then at tight end, we got the upside case of Taysom Hill. And then quarterback stacks in Luke Musgrave and Noah Fant. So pretty happy with this team. Only thing we didn't get was week 17 bringbacks for our Giants and Green Bay stacks so that's the only downside here but i like that team a lot from a roster construction perspective 
for the last pick on this team, it just feels very thin at wide receiver. Now I'm not sure how much I'm really adding by taking a ninth one at this point. Could take the lottery ticket in four net, give this team an extra running back option. Let's see, looking through some of the tight ends to see if there are any obvious stack options. Hunter Henry stands out. I have two Bills players. So that's one potential option. That's really the only one that I'm seeing right now for tight ends. All right, so we'll keep him in mind. And then for running back, obviously four nets. We could take a flyer on a Rams running back. There's been some buzz lately about Izzy Abanacanda uh, getting some usage early in the season if Brees misses time, um, which I really like for the rookies who have a clear out to playing time early in the season since they're usually a bet on late season production anyway. Let's see what else. What else? We've already got our Detroit game stacked up. We don't have a bring back for our Eagles stack. So you know, if we did want to go wide receiver, that, that opens the door to Michael Wilson and Greg Dortch. Could also lean into the team stack a little bit more and go Kez Watkins. So even as we close in on this last pick with this team, just a lot of different ways I can go. I think with needing the Arizona bring back, probably going to eliminate um, Izzy Abanacanda there from being an option. So I think in terms of raw points, Hunter Henry definitely projects better than any of these wide receivers or a guy like Keontae Ingram. It's a question of whether I value that, having that option for week 17. Since we're making a bet on Philly and them having a big game in week 17, I am going to break the tie and go Mike Wilson here round this team out with a 2592 build. Pretty interesting thought process to think through there. But again, if this team is going to win in the finals, it's probably going to involve Jalen Hurts and Dallas Goddard scoring multiple touchdowns, in which case I think that opens the door for a guy like Michael Wilson to be more involved. So this team finished off with Jalen Hurts, Jared Goff, Tony Pollard, David Montgomery, Damian Harris, Jerome Ford, and Kenneth Gainwell, Cooper Cup, Terry McLaurin, Chris Godwin, Gabe Davis, Jamison Williams, Zay Jones, DJ Chark, Tank Dell, and Michael Wilson, and then at tight end, Dallas Goddard and Sam Laporta. So feeling a little bit thin at running back and tight end on this team but uh, definitely have the firepower at wide receiver uh, to advance if this team can make it to the playoffs. So that's all I had for this one. Hope you enjoyed the show. Me and EJ are going to have an episode out tomorrow. We're just going to be in a, a standard $3 freebie league, and we're actually going to be doing guess the player. So I'll be giving EJ clues. He won't be able to see my screen, who I want to draft, and – Basically, if he, I give him up to three clues, if he can't guess the player correctly, uh, then he's going to get stuck with somebody several rounds past ADP. So we're both looking forward to that one. Just going to try to have some fun as best fall summer continues on. So, and just another plug, uh, if you haven't watched our best ball beginner show, definitely give that one a watch. A lot of fun there. And make sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And let me know in the comments what you think of these two teams, which one you like more, 
and how you would have handled uh, this 18th round pick uh, specifically here for for team one. So anyway, that's all I had for this one. Take care. This has been another episode of The Climb. (laughs) 